Today on Father and Son Investing, we're going to play a game. The game goes like this. We're going to flip a coin. If you win, you get $500. If you lose, you get zero. Imagine that if you played this game a thousand times, the odds are very good that you would win about half the time. In which case, what would your average winning be? You guessed it, about $250. But here's the trick. You're only going to get to play this game one time. You can either win $500 or you get nothing. Here's the question. How much would you be willing to pay to play this game? Now, before we go further, let me just give a shout out to Abdel Mesa over at Finance for All because I actually borrowed that idea from him in order to explain a concept called risk premium. If you're not familiar with the concept of risk premium, let's just keep playing the game here. So let's re-ask the question, how much would you be willing to pay to play this game? Would you be willing to pay $250? Hopefully your answer is no, because of course that is the average of what people would win if they were to play this game multiple times. You're taking some risk here with only one chance to flip a coin. So how much would you be willing to pay? In exchange for your risk, you're going to want to have a better return. Would you be willing to accept a 10% better return? Doing the math on that is not too difficult. We're going to take our $250 average return and divide that by what we want to see for our increased return, which in this case is going to be 100% plus 10%, so that we're going to divide by 1.1. We'll come up with about $227.27. Now, the reason we ran through this little exercise is that that difference between $250 and $227.27 is going to be the risk premium. That's the extra premium that we expect for the additional risk. Now, this is an important concept when it comes to investing. In order to get a good return or a better return, one usually needs to accept increased risk. However, comma, there is a unicorn out there right now for investors and savers that doesn't require that increased risk but still gets you the risk premium. There is a way of calculating the risk premium within the United States. Traditionally, the 10-year U.S. Treasury has been what's called the risk-free rate. Now, nothing is absolutely risk-free, but the United States has not default on its debt and so it is considered to essentially be risk-free. If you purchase a 10-year US, U.S. Treasury, your odds of not being able to get your return on that investment or purchase is almost zero. Using a visual from the Wall Street Mojo folks, we're going to see that the equity risk premium formula is simply the expected rate of return minus the risk-free rate. We know one part of this formula now, the risk-free rate is considered the 10-year U.S. Treasury. What is the market expected rate of return? Well, some smart folks at NYU have actually calculated what the country risk premium is for various countries. This was last updated on January 5th of 2022. So this information is current as of this year, although this can, certainly can change from day to day. I've scrolled down to the United States and we're interested in these two columns, this third column and the fourth column over here. Now, the risk-free rate is the third column. Of course, since the 10-year U.S. Treasury is considered the risk-free rate, the risk-free rate here is going to say 0% because it's comparing it to the U.S. Treasury. This column here, then, is the equity risk premium. This is the extra return that one would expect in the United States for purchasing equities. That means that it should be 4.24% above the risk-free rate. Going back to the equation from Wall Street Mojo, we can start to fill in some numbers here. We know that the risk-free rate is 4.01% as of October 17, 2022. We also know what the risk premium is in the United States. That came from NYU, 4.24%. Now we can calculate what the expected rate of return would be in order to get that risk premium on our investment. To get that expected rate of return, we simply will take the risk premium, 4.24%, and add that to the risk-free rate, 4.01%. Adding those together, we come up with 8.25%. 
Now here's where the I bond comes in as a unicorn. Usually a person has to take on additional risk to get that equity risk premium. In the case of an I bond, that is not the case currently. We'll take a hypothetical to explain this. If you were to invest $10,000 in an I bond, that is the, currently the maximum amount that you can purchase in I bonds in any given calendar year. If you were to invest $10,000 in an I bond, the current rate of return right now is 9.62%. Now that will expire on October 31st, but you have to purchase your I bond by October 28th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern time and have an email from Treasury Direct showing that you have purchased that in order to get that rate of 9.62%. That is annualized. So on, on a semi-annual basis, which is the way that Treasury Direct pays interest, that would be 4.81%. We're gonna take our $10,000 and multiply that by 0.481 or 4.81%, and we will come up with $481 is what you will earn in the first six months of your I bond. Now, I bonds compound interest every six months. So although your interest is paid to you each month, it doesn't start compounding until after that sixth month. After that first six months is up, we know that the next six months now for an I bond purchase is going to give you 6.48% on an annual basis. It may actually end up being 6.47%, depending on how Treasury Direct decides to do their rounding. After six months, we'll have $10,481, and we'll go ahead and multiply that by the 3.24%, which is what you'll get for six months. When we do that, we will get an additional $339.58. You could essentially round that up to $340. Therefore, after holding your I bond for 12 months, you will have $10,821 in your Treasury Direct account. Doing the math on that, you will see that you will have an 8.21% rate of return over 12 months. Remember, though, that we said that the risk-free rate plus the risk premium will be 8.24%. That is essentially what an I-bond is going to earn. Now, usually you only get that type of rate of return if you take on additional risk. But in this case, because you're loaning the money to the U.S. government, the risk is essentially zero. Therefore, you're taking on no risk but getting that risk premium purchasing an I-bond. The I-bond in this case is a unicorn. Now you only have a few more days to take advantage of this unicorn rate of return. Remember I said October 28th by 11.59 p.m. Eastern time, and you need to have an email back from Treasury Direct is what they say on their website. Now there may be other opportunities out there, unicorns like this, but I'm not aware of them. If you're aware of one, please, please leave it in the comment section so that other investors and savers can see. But I think that this is a fantastic way to get the risk premium and not carry any risk at all, especially if you are new to investing. If you enjoyed this information, please give us a thumbs up and please, please, please share this information with a young person in your life. Until next time, enjoy your investing.